Hey, it's Max and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be a good one. We are gonna be unboxing, setting up, playing with, we're gonna know what it is and what it's not. And I'm talking about the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. Now, full disclosure, most of you guys know this, but I am lucky enough to be a PlayStation Playmaker. And I wanna thank PlayStation for gifting me the PlayStation Portal Remote Player and the Pulse Explorer wireless earbuds. And as such, this is a sponsored video. And on that note, I wanna thank you guys so, so much for supporting me and getting me this far. So, the PlayStation Portal Remote Player is super popular. However, they are doing their best to keep it in stock. So if you guys want to get your hands on this as well, click on the link down below. We're also going to be testing out the Pulse Explorer wireless earbuds, which you can pre-order already, and it's going to be available on the 6th of December. But first, let's unbox the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. All right, now let's take a look at the back of the PlayStation Portal box. So at the back, we just have the description and the product shot. And it seems to be playing Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Amazing game, by the way. Mm. I love this matte finish of the boxes. Now look at the cool detail of the PlayStation symbols right over here. <laughs> Very cute, look at that. Now they have the PlayStation logo right in the box. Now let's just take this out. Okay, we have the USB-C charger right over here. Now we'll take this out. And now the star of the show. Ta the remote player. Let's go. It smells. Mmm, that VHS smell. I love it. New tech smell. All right, now it's time for the best part, the peeling. Ooh. Okay, so this is it. This is the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. It's got a nice weight to it and it looks very luxe. I can't wait to try it out. So it weighs 530 grams. Now I did come prepared, I bought a screen protector, so before going any further, I went ahead and installed the screen protector. And once that was done, I checked out the look and feel of the PlayStation Portal. The first thing I noticed was that the feel of the handles was exactly the same as the DualSense controller. Now keep in mind, I have used a different remote player made by a different brand, but that one used a mobile phone screen which was a little too small for me, and the controls always felt off to me to the point where I'd only use it as a last resort. So coming from that to the portal with the bigger screen and feel of a real DualSense controller, it was super nice. The other thing I noticed right away was the placement of the mute button which was in thumb's reach on the right side and also the PlayStation button which was also within thumb's reach but on the left side. I always thought it was a little awkward to have to reach all the way to the middle of the controller for those buttons so I really love the placement. On the top of the portal you have the power button, the PlayStation link button, and the volume buttons over here. Flipping it over, you see the USB-C charging port along with the microphone jack. Now, when I first held the PlayStation Portal remote player, I thought it felt slightly different in some way, maybe a little thicker, but I wasn't sure. So I went ahead and measured the thickness of the normal DualSense as well as the Portal, and they were both about 42 millimeters at their thickest points. Where the portal was bigger was the length of the controllers, where it was about 3 millimeters longer. As for the button placements, no surprise here, but they were pretty much the same. So next, it was time to figure out how to connect the portal, and obviously the first time you fire it up, you'll need to connect to the Wi-Fi. To get to the quick menu, you can swipe from the top right corner of the screen, and once the menu pops up, you have options such as brightness, a toggle for airplane mode, and settings. In the settings sub-menu, you have network and system settings. 
In the system settings, you have access to your device information such as the firmware version and also a device reset option in case you want to restore the portal back to factory settings. The other options in the system settings are the device language and the date and time settings. Overall, the menu was pretty basic and easy to navigate and from there I connected to my home Wi-Fi so I could finally link to my PS5. But before that, let's unbox the Pulse Explorer. Let's take a look at the back of the box before we start unboxing it. Now at the back, we have a photo of the earbuds with the charging station. And it also says here, planar magnetic drivers for lifelike sound. More on that later. PlayStation Link lightning fast connection and Go Mobile with Bluetooth support. Let's see what we're working with here. Okay. So this is cool right off the bat. You see an illustrative instruction on how to connect your Pulse Explorer to your PlayStation. There we go. Oh, there's more at the back right here. All right, and we have the star of the show, the Pulse Explorer earbuds. But before we take this out, a USB-C, a USB-USB-C cord here. We have the mat. Okay, no, not the manual. We have here. This looks like the receiver. Um, earbud tips replacement. This is the manual. We have the instruction manual right over here. Let's take a look at the star of the show. Now let's open it up. And then you have the USB-C port right over here for charging. The slide. So right off the bat, I really love how this looks. It matches the entire aesthetic of PlayStation. Obviously, it's going to match your PlayStation 5 and even the controllers. Uh, the earbuds look like they're going to fit in your ears really well, so I can't wait to try them out. The charging station is very sexy. All right guys, so how does it look? I've got them on both ears. I feel like Aloy <laughs> with how these look. It feels very snug, I like it. So on your left, you guys will see the volume button and on your right, you guys will see the PlayStation Link lightning fast connection button. And the cool thing about this is that both earbuds have all those buttons. So you can use your left or right hand, whichever you're most comfortable with. And taking a closer look at the charging station and earbuds, you see the four charging connection points on both the charger as well as the earbuds. Also, check this out, you guys. This is amazing because not only did they incorporate the same design language or the look and feel of the PS5, but if you look really closely, you can see the PlayStation shapes on the earbuds. And I feel like that's something that half of you guys probably wouldn't have noticed unless someone pointed it out. By the way, I use the standard size fittings and they fit pretty well, but they also come with a few different options in case your ear canals are smaller or bigger than average. From there, it was time to connect the PlayStation portal and the process is pretty easy. Once you connect the portal to Wi-Fi, you sign into the PlayStation network using either the PlayStation app or log in manually. I used my app and it was a lot faster and easier. Once the portal was paired up with your account, it gives one final reminder and tips to ensure that your portal can connect to your PS5 remotely. And what you want to do is go into your PS5 settings, go to System, then the Remote Play submenu where you make sure that Remote Play is enabled. Then you go into the Power Saving submenu and make sure you enable the options to make sure that you're connected to the internet and turning on the PS5 from network. Once all that is done, from here on out, you can connect to your PS5 much quicker. Personally for me, once I got it all set up, I used the portal way more than I thought I would. Whether if it was lounging on the couch or getting coffee in the morning, there's just something about the ability to pick up and play with all the PS5 features like the DualSense without being tethered to one spot in the house that makes it super satisfying. The screen as well is very nice with the color performance and brightness being pretty impressive. The viewing angles were also really good. There was no noticeable motion blur, and despite not being an OLED, the blacks and contrast were pretty darn good. The haptic feedback and all of the DualSense stuff were present as well. So all of these things, coupled with the Pulse Explorer earbuds, really made for an immersive experience unlike any other handheld portable device. 
I did also try to play using only the sneakers and they were okay. Not great, but also not bad. As for lag, during all of my time playing on my home network, I didn't have any issues whatsoever with any lag or skipping. Overall, the gameplay experience was excellent. Now, keep in mind, I don't play online first-person shooters and obviously playing online is going to add one more layer of data that needs to be sent. And like any other remote player, the stability of your gaming will really depend on your home network. Your upload and download speed is just one part of the equation. You also have to account for other things in your network environment, such as the number of devices on the network, your router situation, whether or not all your devices and PS5 is connected via Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable, and so many other things. Sony is very clear about what the PlayStation Portal is and what it isn't. It's a remote player that is meant to be used on your home Wi-Fi network so you can use the portal around the house, and it does what it's advertised to do very well. It's not a device meant to be played away from your home network. Well, at least it isn't marketed as such. But more on that later. One other thing I really like about the portal was that I could play on my PS5 and still be in the same room with my nephews or family if they wanted to watch something on the TV. I can see this coming in pretty handy, especially if your household has only one main TV. The battery life was really good and I got around 7 hours in just one charge, which is more than I am ever going to play in one sitting anyway. Now let's talk about the Pulse Explorer earbuds. I can honestly say, these earbuds are the best earbuds I have ever heard for gaming and I've tried a ton of them. I use some pretty expensive and nice wired in-ear monitors when I stream, but honestly, I think I'm going to use the Pulse Explorer earbuds. They're really that good. They sound crunchy, super detailed, and it felt like I could hear the sounds in different places in space around me. The earbuds use planar magnetic drivers, and this is technology that until now has been really reserved for much larger devices like headsets, but Sony's engineering was able to utilize it in the Pulse Explorer earbuds. I also was surprised at how capable the microphone feature was too, especially for just being earbuds. While my voice didn't sound anywhere near as rich and full as compared to a dedicated mic, it still came through loud and clear. And it also did a really good job of taking out background noise. The Pulse Explorer earbuds also connect to your phone or other devices with Bluetooth too. I did test it out with my iPhone and iPad using Bluetooth and they work really well. But the area they really excel at is for gaming and for that reason, I did spend a lot of time using them while gaming on my PC. Pairing the Pulse Explorer with your PC using the PlayStation Link USB receiver is super easy. You literally just insert the USB receiver, then take out the Pulse earbuds from the case. When the USB receiver lights up a solid white, it's paired, and that's it. I didn't need to install any drivers or do anything special when using the PlayStation Link. And speaking of the PlayStation Link, it's supposed to have a much faster connection with reduced latency compared to Bluetooth. And I actually did feel there was less delay on the Pulse Explorer compared to Bluetooth earbuds but I wasn't sure if it was just my imagination. So I decided to see if I could quantify that by recording a baseline signal of a basic PC system sound at the same time as I recorded the output signal of the earbuds. So you can see here the baseline signal is output on track two and the earbud signal is picked up by the microphone on track three. And the signal is recorded at the exact same time. Looking at the waveforms, you can see how the Bluetooth earbuds is much more delayed compared to the Pulse Explorer. Aside from the pricing and business standpoint, you can see why the portal went with a dedicated PlayStation Link receiver inside of it instead of going the Bluetooth route which doesn't standardize the immersion experience. Speaking of the portal, throughout the video you heard me mention that Sony does not market the portal as a standalone device that's meant to be played away from home. And I'll be honest, when they sent it to me, they told me, Sarah, look, this thing is meant to be played on the home Wi-Fi network only, so just make sure you try it out and use it as it was designed for and marketed as. And that makes sense because your home Wi-Fi network is going to be much more stable than public Wi-Fi or cell data hotspots, which can be really spotty. But you guys know me, especially if you guys have seen some of my PC videos, you know I'm going to want to experiment and satisfy my curiosity. After all, I've got unlimited data and a mobile hotspot and I know a lot of you really want to see what's possible. So I went ahead and tested it first at a few public Wi-Fi spots and guess what? I didn't have any issues and had smooth gameplay. Normally, at places where I might want to read a book or relax with friends, I was able to do something else I loved, which is game. And it was pretty cool to play PS5 games in this way. 
I also want to test out gaming using my mobile hotspot and surprisingly, gameplay was very smooth as well. There were a few times where the gameplay skipped just a little bit but overall it was a pretty good experience and I was actually surprised at how well it did. So overall, I thought the PlayStation Portal does what it's designed to do very, very well, and that's to give you an immersive PlayStation 5 experience on a smaller, portable handheld device, which you can enjoy around your house as much as possible. Now, I definitely recommend this if you appreciate the portability of it and if you play a lot of single-player focus games. If you're thinking of grabbing one for yourself with the intention of playing mostly online shooter games, then I'd probably advise against that just because if you think about it, you already have to deal with a lot of um, lag issues with your current console and PC without the additional layer of data transfer that remote play comes with. So, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? But overall, I am having a blast with my PlayStation Portal. It's a device that I never knew I needed and I love it. So if you guys want to get check one out or get one for yourself or you want to get one for your loved ones, they, the stock keeps going in and out in the links down below if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, I hope you guys manage to get one for yourself. Oh, also don't forget about the Pulse Explorer earbuds because this is probably the best gaming earbuds that I have ever tried. So don't sleep on it. But anyway, I hope you guys have fun and I hope this video was able to help you guys make a decision. If you guys if it did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy holidays!